Welcome to today's web webcast, Exploring the Latest Microsoft BI Landscape. My name is Rachel Ingber, and I'm a Business Intelligence and Analytics Consultant. I am joined today in our Philadelphia office by my colleague, Ben Dunmire. There's a lot for us to cover today, but if you do have any questions or are interested in learning more about a particular tool as we're going along, please let us know through the chat panel of WebEx or by emailing us directly with the contact information shown. Any questions that we don't get to during the session, we'll be sure to follow up via email afterwards. In the webcast today, we'll be providing a high-level overview of the existing Microsoft Business Intelligence suite of products, demonstrating a few of these tools to show the latest and greatest updates from 2016, and introducing some considerations for making tool selections. While we will be doing some live demos throughout the webcast to show key capabilities of these tools, we also have numerous on-demand videos available on our website to show in more depth content. As we saw in the objectives, we've broken down the Microsoft product suite into four sections to help guide, uh, guide us today. They are reporting, collaboration, data platform, and analytics. But before diving into the suite, let's start with a brief intro to Thorogood. For those of you unfamiliar with us, we are an independent professional services firm specializing in business intelligence and analytics, solutions, strategies, and services. Founded in 1987, we operate globally from our offices in London, New York, Philadelphia, and Bangalore. We recruit and train our consultants to develop a unique mix of skills, blending business understanding in the form of industry and functional experience with strong technical aptitude and a deep understanding of analytical tools and techniques. The intersection of these three core skills results in high quality services. Some of these services include solution strategy, design, development, and implementation. Our clients are some of the leading organizations in the consumer goods, insurance, pharmaceutical, and banking sectors. We've included a list here with, of some of our customers within each of these sectors to share with you the types of companies we have helped with their BI and A needs. We are independent in that we don't work with any one particular technology vendor. Instead, we work with a wide array of technology firms in the BI market, including back-end, front-end, and analytics-driven technologies. But since today's webcast is focusing on the Microsoft BI suite, let's speak a bit more about our Microsoft partnership. We have been a Microsoft Gold partner for over 10 years, and we are certified for data analytics and BI solutions. In addition, we are a cloud platform certified partner. Our partnership gives us a great interface into the Microsoft development team. This allows us to gain unique insights into the Microsoft product roadmap. It also allows us to work with customers to help shape and feedback into key Microsoft initiatives. We are a part of a number of their programs as listed here, including being a member of the Business Intelligence and Advanced Analytics Partner Advisory Council. If you're interested in working with any of us on any of the innovation programs listed on the screen or interested in progressing a Microsoft initiative, please do let us know. Now let's jump right into the Microsoft product suite. There are many options for creating, managing, and consuming your enterprise data within the Microsoft product suite. This diagram gives a high-level view of the variety of tools that are available and the many ways in which these tools can interact to create a powerful, robust, and customized solution. We realize that the sheer number of these tools can be quite overwhelming and at times confusing, which is why we've chosen to break today's webcast into different sections. Thinking of these many tools in the context of the four groupings we mentioned, we have reporting, how your data is visualized and consumed by your end users, collaboration, how insights found in this reporting can be shared throughout your organization, data platform, how your data is stored, transformed, and accessed to best meet your reporting needs, and finally, analytics, how to drive better business decisions with a deeper understanding of your data. Now, Microsoft has tools in every layer of this architecture. In most cases, the tools have intricate interactions with each other and together offer on-premises, cloud, and hybrid solutions. Overall, it's important when undergoing any kind of tool selection process that you understand what you're trying to accomplish and recognize any technical constraints that you may have. From there, you'll be able to identify the technologies that best meet your needs. To get started, I'll hand it over to Ben to take us through the reporting section. Thanks, Rachel. Well, let's dive right into the Microsoft reporting tools, beginning with perhaps the most familiar, Excel. 
Excel gives us the ability to source, model, and visualize data. Excel 2016 was released over a year ago with improvements such as forecasting functions, new visualization types, and the ability to connect to multi-dimensional analysis services through Power View. Excel 2016 also demonstrates Microsoft's effort to improve integration between on-premises and cloud with direct publishing to Power BI. This past quarter, Microsoft released 10 new data transformation and connectivity features that have been requested by customers to ease data gathering and transforming in Excel. Another very handy feature we saw come out this quarter was a shared with me feature, which organizes shared documents and saves the time of digging through emails to find a link to a shared file. A newer player in the BI suite is Power BI Desktop. Since its release for general availability in July 2015, it has evolved into the go-to place for Microsoft's self-service BI. The desktop tool features user-friendly data connectors, as well as drag-and-drop data modeling and report building. Monthly updates to the desktop application include new visualizations, additional native data connections, and improved features to enhance your reports. As a result of these regular updates, this product is evolving and improving very quickly, often in direct response to user requests. There are a few features that are currently available as previews, one is connecting to Azure Analysis Services, which is a recently released cloud offering from Microsoft. Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services, or SSRS, is the traditional on-premises front-end BI tool used to create highly customizable structured reports. These reports offer pixel-perfect authoring to designate exactly how a report will be viewed. SSRS received a complete makeover with the re release of SQL 2016. From visualizations to new features, everything has an improved look and feel. The new Reporting Services web portal offers a platform to combine different types of reports all in a single location. The portal provides the capability to streamline consumption of reports by you and your colleagues through most modern web browsers. For our first demo for the day, we'll be to take a look at the new Reporting Services web portal. So here we have a shared folder within the Reporting Services web portal, which is entirely new with the release of SQL Server 2016. I can open and view KPIs, traditional paginated reports, mobile reports, as well as connections to data sources and model data sets all from this initial view. For our demos today, we're going to be looking at insurance claims data, specifically for auto insurance. The information is sourced from a SQL Server database containing claim amount and number of claims for vehicles, along with dimensional data such as vehicle type, age, and state. Rather than diving right into a detailed paginated report, we may want a quick holistic view of the data. So these KPIs provide a great way to gain quick insights. We have a few KPIs here showing values such as the average claim amount and average vehicle age. Let's take a look, closer look at this new accounts for the year KPI. So we can go ahead and manage it. And here we're able to edit the KPI. I'm able to update the value to display, set a goal, or set the trend spark line. And this is actually the same simple interface that's used to create a brand new KPI. In order to add a bit more detail to this one, let's put in the goal we had set for acquiring new accounts in 2016. So I'll go ahead and manually set the goal at 600, which is what we had in 2016. And you see as I do that, over here in the preview, it automatically updates with this percentage indicator, which shows the relative position to the target number of accounts. So you can see we're actually 5% above our goal for attaining new accounts during the year. I'll apply these changes and then jump back to the home folder. And you'll see the updated KPI on the home screen right here with that percentage indicator. So here we can gain a quick view of the claims data using the native KPI functionality. Using SQL Server reporting services, we're able to efficiently create some insightful visualizations that provide tremendous value for our organization. In order to get more detail of the claims data, we'll take a look at a paginated report to explore some more robust visualizations. So I'll go ahead and launch this auto insurance report. So the first page we're going to see is some summary visuals, and then the second page is a tabular view. So this is an executive report showing some high-level visualizations with summary statistics like auto claim amount and number of claims. We can also visualize trends over time as well as by state and by vehicle type. To take a look at the underlying data, we can jump over to page two 
and we're able to view the data in a traditional tabular format. And this is something that many of you may be accustomed to with reporting services reports. So we head back to page one and our summary visuals. We'll take a look at this cost of claims chart. Now I think we can make a few quick updates to show a bit more detail and build it out to be more complex and robust. This whole report could be shared with category managers or account teams interested in seeing which vehicle categories are driving their claims. For this visualization in particular, we can update it so claim amount is broken out by vehicle size instead of as a single aggregated value. So I'll head back to my home folder, and then just like for the KPI, we'll want to manage this report. And then I'll be able to launch it in Report Builder, which is the desktop application tool for reporting services. And there I'll be able to make quick changes, such as adding more detail to a visualization. So here I am in Report Builder, and you see the familiar Microsoft toolbar along the top, along with available parameters and data over here on the left-hand side. A, few, a new feature actually allows me to configure the position of my parameters, so I'm able to move them and adjust where I want them to be. Taking a look at the cost of claims chart, to edit the report, I can just start by double-clicking on the chart area. So I think I'll add the vehicle size to the series group, and then I think this visualization will look a bit better if we update the chart type. So I'm gonna make this a stacked area chart. And then, in order to distinguish between the vehicle sizes, we'll just need to add a new legend. And there we go. So a simple, couple simple updates. And the last, step, set, the last step is to save this report. And that will automatically update it back on the web portal. So let's head back to my browser. And then we'll go to the home folder and again launch that auto insurance report. And once it loads, you'll be able to see the changes that we just made so they're immediately seen. So now we have that cost of claims chart broken out by small and large vehicle types. So the changes we've made are visible both to myself and any of my colleagues who utilize this shared folder on the web portal. And this allows the insights from this report to be spread easily and instantaneously. And this gets into the collaboration aspect that Rachel will be covering in just a bit. As a quick recap so far, we see Microsoft offers a few different tools for reporting. So, how do you choose a tool that best serves your unique business case? Determining which of these tools is best for your organization really depends on your specific business needs and use cases. There's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Each type of report has its benefits and uses. Excel reports remain the go-to standard for spreadsheets and ad hoc number crunching analysis. Power BI offers the ability for you to create powerful and interactive self-service reports and reporting services reports are the premier solution for static standard reporting. Identifying the best tool to use is a crucial first step to developing a solution and definitely a place where consultants at Thurgood are able to offer insights from our previous experience. Within these considerations for reporting tools is the mobile capabilities. Bringing reporting with you wherever you go is a newer ability, but something we are seeing our clients adopt on larger and larger scales. The Power BI mobile application is available for Apple, Android, and Windows devices. The app has a very similar look and feel to PowerBI.com, but is optimized for touchscreen use. It is possible to view reports offline, and refreshers can be scheduled so the data is up to date for viewing. There are several recent updates, such as improvements to annotations and favorites. We're not going to have time to look at Power BI mobile, but we do have a short video available on our website using the link on screen. It goes into more detail and demos the look and feel of the mobile app. Also through this application is the ability to view reporting services mobile reports. As with Power BI, you do not need a live connection to your data to view these reports, giving you more flexibility to work offline while on the go. Reports are developed and published using the mobile report publisher to easily create reports for both phones and tablets that leverage data sources such as SQL Server, or Analysis Services. While these reports are still accessible through your mobile browser, they can also be accessed through the Power BI mobile app. We'll go ahead and jump into another demo to check out the mobile report publisher. 
So to take a look at mobile reporting capabilities available through reporting services, we'll start where we left off in the web portal. This time, we'll look into editing content within a mobile report. So you see I have a handful of mobile reports here, and we can edit, we can head into an existing report and open it in Mobile Report Publisher. So just like before, we'll go ahead and manage this report, and then I'll launch it in my Mobile Report Publisher tool. The Mobile Report Publisher is a new tool released early last year, providing increased flexibility when designing reports that will be viewed on a variety of devices. The intuitive drag and drop functionality makes it easy to create visual and touch-friendly content for on-the-go analysis. So you see here, I'm able to easily move and resize tiles and also add new ones. So I think I'll add a new simple KPI right over here and pull that on. Now the next step would be to switch over to the data tab here and then select the data field to display from the available data sets. But I'll, I'll keep the default field for now and just update the title to be my number of claims for the year to date. So then, now that I updated the title, with the new updates to Mobile Report Publisher, I have the ability to add a drill through target. This is simply a link to another existing report. When I'm looking through a report and want to take a deeper dive into my analysis, I can quickly move from one report to another. So I'm going to add a drill through from this new visualization to a report that has a bit more detail. So I have the claims KPI selected. I'll go down here and add a drill through target. And I'm going to connect this visualization to another mobile report. And since it is a claims KPI, it makes sense to connect this to my claims summary report. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll be able to select the parameters I want to pass through. This new feature offers the ability to pass parameters. Now these could be filter selections or default values we want to pass and maintain as we dive into that deeper analysis. So another great feature of the Mobile Report Publisher tool is the ability to define layouts for specific mobile devices. So let me switch over to my tablet view. And you see here I have an existing view already, but I think I want to add that new KPI visualization to it. And it's just as simple as dragging and dropping. So I'll go ahead and resize that and then pull it on. So I can then switch layouts to and be able to incorporate a phone layout. So you see I have this blank canvas where I can add my visualizations in the same drag and drop manner. So for the smaller layout on the phone, I don't think I'm going to use that number of claims by vehicle type line chart because it's a bit too complex and detailed to be viewed on a phone uh, as opposed to a tablet. So I'm going to use some of these other visualizations and once I've decided which setup I want and configured it, I can go ahead and just save this report and it will automatically update back on the web portal. So let's move back to my browser and then check out the web portal. We'll go to the home folder and then we'll launch that executive insurance report we were just looking at. And we'll be able to see those changes that I just made. So you see that new KPI right here. And this is looking at the master, de master desktop view. Let's click on that KPI and we'll be drilled through to the claim summary report. So here we'll be able to look in more detail into the claims, de the claims data. So we made these changes very quickly and intuitively, and you can see the visualizations are large and touch-friendly for mobile use. The layouts we created for different screen sizes will configure to fit tablets and phones using device detection. So with this, structured reporting services reports and the analysis they provide are ready to be brought on the go wherever your business takes you. Now we'll move on to our next section, collaboration or how insights found in these reports can be shared throughout your organization. For this, I'll turn it over to Rachel. Thanks, Ben. In Microsoft collaboration space, we're first going to talk about the latest version of SharePoint. SharePoint 2016 has been available since May of last year. New features in that release included SharePoint compliance with modern web browsers like Chrome and Safari. Additionally, the ability to access information while on the go, like Ben just spoke about, is becoming even more of a necessity. So SharePoint 16 is mobile friendly to allow you that seamless transition from viewing the site on your desktop to your tablet or even your smartphone. As of December 13th, Feature Pack 1 enables additional administrative logging, which assists your SharePoint admins in troubleshooting and cutting down the amount of time needed to do so. 
as well as some other customization and OneDrive integration. As we saw Ben show us in the first demo, the Reporting Services web portal offers a platform to combine a number of reporting media into a single location. It provides a streamlined connection to your SQL Server source to create KPIs right in the web browser, or you can choose to edit or author reports utilizing that Report Builder tool. By accessing Report Builder through the web portal, any content that you create or change is immediately saved to that shared folder and can be accessed by my colleagues. Navigating through the content is simplified with the structured folders and search features of the portal. SSRS was designed to be an on-premises solution that customers can deploy and manage on their own servers. But for customers who need an on-premises solution but are also utilizing Power BI for report authoring, Microsoft is adding support for Power BI reports to SSRS. It's currently in development, but available as a preview, um, is the ability to create a report in Power BI Desktop, publish it to your SSRS report server, and then view and interact with it right in your web browser. Currently, Power BI's full solution for sharing and collaborating is with the software as a service running in Microsoft's Azure data center. Power BI is used to share content from numerous applications, such as Power BI Desktop or Excel. On-premises reports or data can be published to Power BI, and from there the reports can be edited directly online. While Power BI Desktop is free to download and get started with, Additional enterprise capabilities are available through the service with a Power BI Pro subscription. As with the desktop tool, Power BI is continually being reevaluated and improved by Microsoft based on the needs and requests of their end users. In the next demo, we're going to take a look at examples of this in some of the recent preview features that have been released. So let's go ahead and see Power BI in action. So from any web browser, I can view my published content using app.powerbi.com, which is where I am right now, where I can see all of my reports, dashboards, and data sets that are hosted on Microsoft Cloud. The interactive report that I'm showing here displays a loss analysis for auto insurance claims. We have KPIs showing total claims, total losses, and average loss across the top, as well as some more dynamic visualizations to help us understand this claims data. This is a very similar interface to Power BI Desktop, which is that local application for report authoring. As the publisher of this report, I have the ability to, um, to edit or add visualizations to this published report directly from my web browser. If this report had been published by one of my team members, my ability to edit would be dependent on the methods used to share the report with me, as well as the permissions that the original publisher gave to me. Microsoft releases monthly updates for Power BI, so there are constantly new features to explore to refresh your user experience. Particularly relevant to collaboration are two new features here. We can export the report to PowerPoint instead of having to take screenshots from Power BI. And then we can also download the report as a local copy to work with using Power BI Desktop. And this is very useful for users that want to make changes to reports but don't want to affect other users. You'll notice that these two in particular are actually preview features. Microsoft is continually implementing updates based on consumer feedback, but they do allow users to enable or disable new features so as not to interrupt daily operations. Another preview feature here uh, you'll notice is in my left-hand navigation. My left-hand navigation is pretty crowded with dashboards and reports and data sets, and users with even more reports and data sets face similar challenges navigating and efficiently discovering the information they need. If I go, uh, go through my settings area here, I can choose to turn on the preview features. And with that, you can instantly see that my navigation has been refreshed to an, an updated navigation console. Here I can see separated dashboards, reports, and workbooks, as well as the ability to search for content. These are just a few examples showing Power BI as an evolving tool. So let's jump over to an auto insurance dashboard that I have previously created. Power BI dashboards combine insights from multiple reports as tiles that can be sourced from different data sets. These dashboards provide a platform to combine the most important data points and visualizations I need to monitor and provide a direct link to more detailed reports. 
Clicking on any of these tiles will take me to the underlying report. If I want to share this dashboard and the underlying reports with my colleagues, there are a few ways to do so. First, I can share a read-only view with anyone in my organization using that share icon, and can even share outside of my organization if I'm not utilizing row-level security. So I'm going to go ahead and share this to, um, with Ben because he has just been added onto our team. Clicking share here, I'll get a quick pop-up of success. There we go. <clears throat> with a Power BI Pro license, on the other hand, sharing your data sets, reports, and dashboards becomes even easier and more collaborative because of the benefits of organizational content packs. Content packs are bundled solutions consisting of data sets, reports, and dashboards that are shared through um, that are shared to the entire organization. I can see that my colleague Bridget has shared an executive summary content pack displaying high-level insurance insurance information, and this will add a new set of dashboards and reports to my workspace to aid in my analysis. If I click to get it now. I had already added this to my workspace, so this has added a lost dashboard and the underlying reports to my view here. And I can now explore this dashboard and dive into the underlying reports in order to uncover insights to enhance my organization's ability to share information and make timely data-driven decisions across our entire enterprise. That was a brief intro into Power BI, its use as a reporting tool, and its strength as an ecosystem for collaboration. You can now see how Power BI continually offers evolving functionalities and opens the door for self-service collaboration across your organization. Prior to the new feature we mentioned a few minutes ago, reporting services with SQL Server 2016 allowed users to pin the SSRS report items to Power BI as a tile on a dashboard, like the dashboard we just saw. In addition to this, the integration of Power BI reports into the reporting services web portal is currently available in a limited capacity through a technical preview. With this preview, you can deploy Power BI desktop reports to SSRS and consume and interact with these reports directly on the web portal. Previously, you could save Power BI reports on the portal, but you would have to view the actual reports through Power BI desktop. With this feature now, users are able to view and interact with self-service reports published to reporting services on-premises with no need for Power BI Desktop or a Power BI Pro license. These options will help organizations achieve a more comprehensive enterprise-wide solution. Overall, this increases the flexibility of the Microsoft BI suite, so users can build reports that fit their needs and then access both those interactive Power BI reports alongside the structured reporting services reports in a single location. Determining a reporting integration strategy for your organization depends on the nature of your reporting and how the reporting is used within your business. At Thoroughgood, we have experience developing reporting strategies and would be happy to speak further with you about your unique situation. Be sure to reach out to us if you're interested to stay up to date with the latest developments about this evolving and exciting feature. Next, we're going to talk about data platforms or how your data is stored, transformed, and accessed to best meet your reporting needs. Before we get to the newest version of SQL Server, we want to briefly cover the incremental changes that were seen in SQL Server 14 like Hecaton, which gave the ability to create in-memory objects to get better performance. The majority of the BI tools were largely unchanged in the 14 release and were picked up in the 2016 release. SQL Server 16, which was released this past June, came with many welcomed new features and improvements. We'll start by taking a look at the changes to the core database product. Microsoft implemented a feature that allows hybrid storage of your data, with Stretch Database as one of the headline features. Stretch Database allows for your historical data, or data that you don't query frequently, to be stored in the cloud through Azure. On the other hand, your frequently used data can remain on-premises, so you will experience optimal performance when querying that data. A new feature with regards to security is the Always Encrypted feature that ensures sensitive data is secured at all points of the life cycle. Service Pack 1, which was released this past November, is the first round of improvements and enhancements to SQL Server 16 that's been offered by Microsoft. It offers improved transaction and query performance. 
but what makes the service pack unique is the availability of the following new data warehousing features, not only in the enterprise edition, but also available to web, express, and local DB users as well. To name a few, there's partitioning, compression, change data capture, and database snapshots, as well as that innovative security feature I just mentioned, always encrypted. From a BI tools perspective, the majority of the components got a refresh. For integration services, which is the platform for data integration and transformation, there are overall improvements to connectivity, manageability, and usability. There is expanded connectivity to data sources, both in the cloud and on-premises. There's also the ability to deploy a single package as opposed to having to deploy an entire project. Master Data Services is a tool that is getting a lot of momentum from our customers. It allows your organization to manage a trusted version of non-transactional data. SQL Server 16 provided a much needed improvement to the user interface performance and scale. For Analysis Services, which is the online analytical data engine and data mining tool, Improvements were made to compatibility, connectivity, and performance. A much requested feature implemented for multidimensional models is the ability for Power BI to report off of these models. Many other improvements were made under the hood that resulted in improved performance when reporting in Excel. The analysis services tabular model received an upgrade as well. Microsoft has listened to their users and worked to make Tabular closer to what's available as standard features for multidimensional. There are too many things to list out individually here, but if you would like more information about these particular improvements, make sure to check out our on-demand video on SQL Server 16 for more. Generally speaking though, Tabular became a much more performant and scalable platform with improvements to DAX, connectivity, and the inclusion of many-to-many -many relationships. Azure SQL Database is Microsoft's relational database in the cloud, or the equivalent of the relational SQL Server. And version 12 brings an almost complete compatibility with on-premises SQL Server. Because of this compatibility, the migration between an on-premises SQL Server database and a cloud database is quite easy. Azure SQL Data Warehouse is Microsoft's cloud-based scale-out database offering. The Azure SQL Data Warehouse is capable of processing large volumes of both relational and non-relational data. Azure Analysis Services, which is currently only available in public preview, is an enterprise-grade OLAP engine and BI modeling platform based on the well-established SQL Server Analysis Services, which is offered as a fully managed platform as a service. Azure Analysis Services enables developers and BI professionals alike to create BI semantic models that can power highly interactive and rich analytical experiences in your BI tools, like Power BI in Excel, as well as in your custom application. Finally, Microsoft's 100% cloud-based Hadoop service is called HD Insight. It supports managed clusters for Apache Storm, Spark, and Hive, as well as our server. As with other Azure services, it is easy to spin up new nodes when they're needed, and it follows a pay-as-you-use model. There is a slight lag in features from when they appear in the open source community and when they're added into HD Insight. This is caused by the thorough testing that occurs to ensure the feature complies with Azure's industry-leading SLA. One of the most common questions we get from our customers is, should we upgrade? The thing is, it's not a simple yes or no answer. If you're in a similar boat and thinking of upgrading yourself, it's really going to be dependent on a number of factors, such as the cost of the upgrade, the technical constraints that you have within your organization, how ready you are for cloud, what business requirements you're trying to address, and what level of support you need from the vendor, as, as well as some other considerations. So for example, SQL Server 2008 R2 is already out of mainstream support. If you're looking for support, you can ask yourself the other questions to determine if your strategy should take you to 2014 or the more modern platforms like Azure or 2016. Don't hesitate to reach out if you'd like assistance in exploring these different options and considerations. We're happy to help. This takes us to our final product section, analytics, or how to drive better business decisions with a deeper understanding of your data. So for this, I'll hand it back over to Ben. Thank you, Rachel. For our final portfolio section, we'll look into the various ways to incorporate analytics into your Microsoft BI platform. Within Power BI, there are two distinct features that integrate the analytical strength of R 
with the visual presentations of Power BI. These are the RScript Data Connector and the RScript Visual. The RScript Data Connector allows us to load the resulting data set of an existing RScript into Power BI. This data is then available to incorporate into a Power BI data model or to visualize in reports. The RScript Visual allows for an R analysis to be executed against the data already loaded into Power BI. This analysis incorporates a native R visual, such as a forecast plot or a correlation plot, into a Power BI report. Azure Machine Learning is Microsoft's cloud-based analytics service and a core component of the Cortana Analytics Suite. It has a number of pre-built functions to create models, making it incredibly user-friendly. Additionally, you can run your own R and Python scripts using their respective execute script modules. Results can then be published as an Azure web service, which you can then consume from other applications. Since their purchase of Revolution Analytics in 2015, Microsoft has improved and expanded the possibilities for integrating R into Microsoft BI solutions. For the analysis of fully scalable data sets, Microsoft offers R Server. Unlike the familiar open source R, R Server is commercially supported. R Server can run advanced analytics on enterprise scale data sets through the use of Scale R. Scale R is a set of functions written to be similar to the base R functions, but developed by Microsoft to enable performant analysis of larger data sets through parallel processing. R Server is able to process any open source R code or code that has been enhanced with these Scale R functions. With the, re with the release of SQL Server 2016, in conjunction with the prior purchase of Revolution Analytics, there's now the ability to run advanced analytics algorithms directly in a database. R scripts can be executed through stored procedures without having to pull data in memory with SQL Server R services. With this integration, organizations have more agility, better performance, and increased cost effectiveness. In this demonstration, will show how to use SQL Server R services to calculate some key predictive metrics for the auto insurance data set we've been using today. We'll start with a look behind the scenes at the tables and store procedure used in this analysis. So to, to demonstrate SQL Server R services, we'll take the business case of an underwriter who receives submissions with vehicle type, age of the vehicle, and driver information. The submissions need to be scored with an existing R model to predict frequency and severity and calculate baseline premium values. So as each new submission is received, it is stored in a new submissions or unprocessed table, which we see right here. Using these new submissions, we want to calculate predictive insurance values to aid in setting premiums. So these three rows will be run here in this store procedure, which is used to calculate the values, and it has our existing R script within it, and that's shown right here in red. The script takes into account the vehicle type, age, and driver info to produce valuable metrics. As this predictive model runs, the submissions are moved over here to a process table, which stores the scored submissions. So you can see some of the predicted values right down here. The scores in this process table are then available in our SQL database to report on, which we'll see now on the web portal. So from the same folder in the reporting services web portal we saw in the previous demo, I'm gonna open the analysis of submissions report. This report is connected to my SQL 2016 database that we were just exploring in the back end. In the top section of the report, I can see submissions that have not yet been scored by the R model from that new submissions table. Below this initial table, we can see a few summary visuals to analyze the process submissions. And at the bottom of the report, there's a full list of submissions that have already been scored where we see the predicted frequency, severity, and pure premium values calculated by that R model. Now, frequency refers to how often a submission will be made. Severity is a predicted average cost resulting from the submission. And then these two metrics form the pure premium, which is the expected value and basis for quoted premium. With SQL Server R services, I have a single connection linking this reporting services report to the unscored submissions, the stored procedure containing the R script, and the scored values in the process table. Because of this full integration, I could run that R model to generate the predicted values for any of the unscored submissions. So we'll go up here and score submission. 
and let's choose the one ending in a 10. And then we'll go ahead and run the report. Now right now, this is running the store procedure and calculating the predictive values. As a front end user, I can interact with these reports here, while behind the scenes, the R model is calculating the values from the unscored table and adding the record to the scored table. So I'll go ahead and refresh the report. And you'll see now we only have two unscored submissions. And if we head on down to the score table, you can see that policy ID ending in a 10 is right here. And you see kind of it falls below average and as a low premium value. And these values have also been added to the summary visuals and the aggregations. So I've been able to see all this data and score submission I was immediately interested in all from this single report. Sharing this report and allowing others to use it spreads the insights of the R models easily and efficiently. The ability to use R directly in SQL 2016 and cutting out intermediate steps that were previously necessary is a perfect example of how the elements of the Microsoft platform can work together to simplify and streamline your BI reporting to provide maximum benefit to your business. So we covered a lot during our product portfolio discussion, so let's take a few minutes to summarize what we've seen. We've seen numerous tools from Microsoft that can be handpicked to create your own custom enterprise BI architecture. The many options provide the ability to use data from both on-premises and cloud data sources. Similarly, report types can be managed and consumed entirely on-premises, in the cloud, or through a hybrid approach. But a question you may be asking yourself is, what have we historically seen as a standard architecture and what have we seen customers move toward? Traditionally, a BI architecture was built entirely on premises. The slide here shows an example of a fully on premises architecture with SQL 2012 as a data platform, analytics in R, reporting in Excel, and collaboration in SharePoint. Taking a look at the poll results, I see there are many people attending the webcast today who are actually already incorporating a few cloud based tools into your architecture. With the infusion of cloud-based offerings, a hybrid architecture could look something like what's showing on the slide here. You could continue to leverage, say, SQL 2012 and SharePoint on-premises, but utilize Azure ML and Power BI for your analytics and reporting needs in the cloud. Overall, the key takeaway is to understand that you and your business are not locked into a particular track. If you're currently on-premises, you don't have to stay there but you don't need to jump to a full cloud solution all at once either. There are many points of integration between the data platform, BI tools, and collaboration tools. Choosing the right combination is based on business requirements, technical constraints, the capabilities of the tools, and cloud readiness, which simplifies your list of choices and hopefully leads you to the right architecture for your particular project. If you'd like to learn more about any of the topics we discussed today, or in deciding what the best plan of action might be for your company moving forward, we'd be happy to assist. Feel free to reach out to either Rachel or myself if you have any questions about how components of the Microsoft BI landscape can fit into the current architecture being used by your organization. Here at Thoroughgood, we approach all projects in a way of balancing business goals and value with technical possibilities in order to achieve maximum potential for our clients. We help our customers with everything from implementations of individual solutions to how to get started with a tool to developing enterprise-wide BI strategies and roadmaps, and many services in between. Rachel and I would like to thank you again for attending our webcast today on exploring the latest Microsoft BI landscape. Our contact information is included here. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions and we'll be sure to follow up with you. Have a great day.